for dude. the people. Hey, everybody. We gotta go through the intro again. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Hey, everybody. Welcome back to uh, another episode of Aces Tech Tuesdays. This is episode 20, I think. I don't really count these things. I just answer questions. Um, so, uh, replace Ben because why is Ben not here today? Why do we do this? For the people. We do it for the people. So, I had to fire Ben and then I hired Bradley. So, Bradley's going to be my new partner in this video. Yep. We're going to burn through some questions and demystify all things EFI. Now, as you guys know, I'm very shy on camera and I do things and all this whatnot, but we're going to burn through some questions and let's see here. There we go. You want to do the first one for me? Sure. Jamie Sproudlin, Sproudlin, 8504. Mm -hmm, Thank mm -hmm. you for Tech Tuesday. I'm installing a kill shot on my 1948 Chevy panel van with a 350 engine. I look forward to the first run working on the wiring now. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, when you get done with that and it's running and doing good and all that jazz, make a nice video, do a, do a social media post or whatever, and send it to us if you want to. You can send it. I think it's like customer service or marketing at acesefi.com. Um, we like a cool build. If you've got any questions about the install, just hit us up. We don't mind at all. Um, TJ, Bradley, myself, one, one of the three of us, will uh, we'll get back to you and uh, see what's what on things. Not a big deal. Um, if you noticed, y'all, that I got myself a throttle body laying here on the thing. I saw some comments on Facebook last night, I think it was, going over the placement of the block-off plug for the boost reference. So we're just going to cover that right fast. This is a full house or kill shot or royal flush throttle body. They're all the same throttle body, different etching. In these, there's a little plug. There's a little port right here. In the instructions, it shows a picture of us putting the plug in. That's only for very specific application, which is a draw-through application. So if it's a draw-through turbocharger application, it means it sets on top the turbo. All the air and fuel runs just through it, goes through the turbo, so on and so forth. Or if it's a roots-style blower application where it's a draw-through. So the reason that's plugged off is because the map sensor port is that hole right there. You plug it off, and in a roots application, you put the boost reference port in and run it to where the boost side of the atmosphere is going to be. So that way you're making pressure on one side of it, not the other. That way that it's going to reference correctly and map the fuel correctly and do a good job. Now, if you run an NA or blow-through application like a turbo or centrifugal supercharger, this port needs to be open because it pressurizes the entire throttle body because literally the pressure is going through it. So you leave that port open does a good job and then you can use it as an and this boost reference port to run to your fuel pressure regulator for that one-to-one -one, uh, boost versus fuel ratio there that way as the air pressure comes up or boost pressure comes up inside of where it's pressurizing at the fuel pressure comes up to match that so the mechanically injector does this, its job correctly your next question six speed vert please update pc software so to show the VE table active and attuned, give us an overlay, show us what cell we're in and run it in, so on and so forth. I'm assuming they're making this uh, they're making this comment. That's a six-speed vert um, because they're using jackpot software where we do not have the trace option available. Now, the kill shot and a few other systems, it does have trace functionality. So you can click on the trace button and it'll show you exactly where you're running at. Now, we haven't, we're not doing an overlay this just yet, but we may do it in a more complex data logging setup later of, like, playing the tunes back and playing the data logs back and all that jazz. But it's something we're talking about, and we really need to see if, it, you know, if it's a thing we really need to do or if it's just like, eh, not that many people use it. But the trace function is important. It, you should be seeing that in the jackpot tuning software soon. Um it just go to your VE table, and at the bottom where the upload, the small upload and download is, you'll see uh, you'll see an icon that'll say trace. Just click on it; it'll start tracing. It'll read live data. So, it would at least show you where you're at in the, the table. If you want to read the live data, like if you go to the learning table and do that, you can click the upload button, and it will update where the table's at. David Turner, sixty-three ninety-seven says, "I'm able to update the handheld with my Chromebook, the tuning software I had to buy a Windows computer." So, Accurate. That is true. I actually ran into the same situation whenever I bought a laptop. Ended up being a Chromebook. He ended up getting it, yeah. giving it to his mom. I did. I had to go get a Windows laptop. I mean, why waste it? It was a good deal. Yeah, it was a good. It was a perfectly fine computer, just not for what I was going to use it for. Yeah. So, 
Chromebooks are a little hit or miss on our stuff. Honestly, you can you can unpack files and all that, but where it uses Windows as an app, that it just gives it a headache. So yeah. it don't work perfectly every time. I'd like if it did because Chromebooks are cheap. So when you're telling you're trying to tell somebody they want to tune it and you want you know they're trying to do a remote tune, you're like you need to go buy a laptop. And they're they're like, gonna go get the cheapest laptop they can. Yeah, find. they'll get a Chromebook. They're like yeah. Unfortunately, the Windows computer that needs really starts around four hundred dollars, not two hundred dollars. Brandon Horton, fifteen seventy two. Will there be an option to use a BIM module for Dakota Digital? Yep. Yes. Working on it. Working with their engineers right now about CAN module stuff. Uh, they're uh, we're going through all of our CAN information, sharing it with them, this, that, and the other. So I've seen a working demonstration of it, of it actually, you know, reading the data and all that. So you should be seeing a BIM module from Dakota Digital soon. And when we do, we're we're gonna obviously put it out there in social media and on our on our YouTube and on our thing. Because I want to try to scumbag them into sending me a, a setup for the Blazer and That'd then cool. actually testing the BIM module here in house. But make a YouTube video or a short. Dude, that Blazer, video on the, the Blazer, Blazer, it's all right, but like the nothing works on the dash other than a red light. Yeah, and it's just like a red light. There's nothing there. It's just red. I don't even know what that means. So, Paul Mingler, 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 two eight nine. I wonder if he has a Ford like a 289. I guess Tech Tuesday is no longer for the people. No, it's always for the people. That was the original idea. We actually, that was part of like the first paragraph of the conversation me, be, me and Ben had about this thing. Because you remember, it was old school. We had an iPhone and a really cruddy mic thing set up and all that jazz. It was like, yeah, you, know, you still see the nicotine stains in the wall behind us where it's just being <laughs> an office. Uh, some manager's no office. Lighting, nothing. Nothing. It was like a little just, dark dungeony closet yep. where you store boxes, and that's I what was in here. I remember the camera up high too. There's no options. You had that up high, and y'all were looking up at it like, "Hey guys, we're back." That all they that the, the tablecloth. It was sitting on like awesome. old inventory. Like we're literally in a back, like an old manager's in the closet, closet <laughs> office thing here. It's crazy. Um, Jeff Watson had to thing up and drive for a couple of weeks. Good. Battery voltage is reading 9.1, 10.1, and the battery reads 14.5 using a multimeter installation by the book, instructions, so on and so forth. Good. I'm glad you read them. Some folks don't. Uh, it is a new handheld. Original one uh, stopped working a few minutes after the initial setup. Interesting you have a voltage-related issue, and it already smoked a handheld. That, that just, Those two things will go together. Yep. And it's not so much that the handheld is having a voltage problem. It means a voltage problem killed the handheld, generally. Because whenever I go through and I start testing logic circuits on these things when they come in, after we replace them and all that, and I, I have five minutes, I'll take one apart, and I'll t do some testing. I usually find there's like a smoked IC chip that took a lot, a large amount of voltage. So you got something funny probably happening either with your switch ignition wire. Maybe it's tied into an alternator or something like that, or it's an insufficient hookup to it. Um, because it's reading low voltage. Either you got the wrong gauge wire and it's running a long distance um, for the system, or something funny like that that's putting extra strain on the circuitry, killing your handheld. That's the biggest issue I see. Two issues I see with handhelds. One, voltage will smoke them. Two, uh, not extracting the files when you're doing a, a firmware update and trying to make it happen and then bricking the thing on the firmware like it ruins the bootloader basically and then that's really hard to recover so sometimes we issues with that on the RMA as well that's that's I don't know 70% of the RMAs we process in here isn't like any kind of factory faults or anything it's it's like the handheld literally wasn't updated so the customer gets frustrated sends it back in we just stab the thing in update it and send it back out yeah Every once in a while, the bootloader is completely ruined, and we just, you know, we just help the people out. So we just hook them up with a handheld. But yeah, Cole Lewis building a 06 Colorado. We got a 5.3 DoD Delete BTR Stage Four Truck Cam 4L60 with a stall converter. Other than the fact that it's a Colorado, that's what's in our Blazer. We got a 5.3 with a BTR Stage Four Cam with a 4L60E that has a bit of a stall converter in it. Same thing. We're even using drive-by wire too. Um, that thing hits and runs. I gotta tune it, but I mean that's it. It's just light on t it's light on timing right now. But I mean we're doing that for testing, so yeah. I don't really know if that's a question or anything. I just wanted to make that comment. That's pretty sweet. 
Uh, has anyone else had an issue where the VSS sensor is reading zero MPH and the transmission is not shifting? Got a jackpot with a 4L80. Well, I can tell you. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> That already, that I might have, I might have already incidentally yeah, answered this you one. Did. That's it right there on the top. Yeah. So, any hoozles, the firmware. If you do a jackpot and it's running fine, and you do a firmware update, and your trans don't work. On the jackpot, if you do a drive-by wire firmware, that does drive-by wire and it has trans control parameters. If you select the cable one, like for some reason in your head you have a drive-by cable throttle body and you think you need that one, that gets rid of the transmission parameters. So you have to do the drive-by wire because it has the, is the building coming down? It's what it sounds like. There's like a flat spot on one of those. Dude, trains. that's those crazy. crazy. That's crazy. I've never felt it shake like that before. That, that's that was, first. It made the lights flicker a that's little bit. That's first. So anywho. Uh, back, what are we talking about? Let's talk about some crazy tangenty stuff. Now, jackpot stuff. If you select drive by wire, um, that's going to have the trans parameters in it. Even if you're running drive by cable, you can just tell it no, even though you have to use the firmware for the drive by wire. If you incidentally select drive by cable because you have a drive by cable uh, throttle body, but it's a transmission too, and you select the cable when it does not have transmission parameters in it. So even if you select it and you put the stuff in and you set everything up, it's still not going to do anything because logically it didn't have the, the firmware set up to do it. So if you got a transmission or drive-by wire, it has to be drive-by wire firmware. Drive-by wire firmware. Yes. And then go into the start wizard. Yeah. And when it asks you to do drive-by wire, you just select no. That's it. And then you've got your trans control. There that, that, is a, that is a huge thing. I think this dude actually replied, and that suggestion I gave him actually sorted it out. That really kind of wraps us up here. I mean, we kind of just stumbled through a whole bunch of different things. Again, you know, we're here doing this for the people. Uh, we thank you for setting through us on this another fine Tech Tuesday. And if you have any other uh, questions, comments, concerns, just, just drop them in the comment section. It could be praise or it could be some shade. It is what it is. So we're just we're here for you to, to respond to your questions and your needs. And if you have great ideas about suggestions for our software, firmware, any of our, our products we have, just drop them in because, you know, we read this stuff too. And some of the ideas that we, we've actually pushed up this become a thing is from people giving suggestions. Like, I'm like, hey, that's a – that's a solid idea. I'll just yep. write an email about it and send it up, and they're cool with it, and they just research it. Next thing you know, it's a thing. So, Was the uh, the Godzilla a recommendation from somebody? Oh, dude, that's been, that's been asked about a whole bunch because, you know, we are doing a jackpot Godzilla. We're actually doing the, the prototyping stages on that right now. Wiring harness, ECU, some custom firmware on it. Ooh, it's going to be cool. Yeah. But – That'll be. I can't wait to release that because it got some pretty well known people that we're working with on that, and they're going to be laying out a harness that makes sense on the install. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. That'll be a lot of fun. You get a good outro. I'll let you. I'll let you do the outro. I got to do the Ben style. Here we go. Thank you guys for tuning in to another Tech Tuesday video with Bradley and Tim. We'll see you next week on Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday it is. Till so. next time. Till next time. Give them the whole scoop. That's that's some tool time stuff, man. I just wave. <laughs> Bye now. See you.